What's up YouTube and today is Crockpot Thursday. Welcome to Sir Hunter Reviews. I'm Mark and without any further ado I'm going to be discussing four theories with you guys. The first two of which I found on Reddit and the second two are theories that I comprised myself. Enjoy! Oh yeah, wait, 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 wait. I forgot to say it. Please, slap a like on this video, subscribe so that it helps my channel blow the fuck up! Alright, so this first theory is, who the fuck is up on those burning crosses? Now, um, I saw this theory on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So the credit goes to a lot of different people, but I will say that I added my own motherfucking flair on it. Alright, so we know that Dolores said, and like, what, 10 or 12 Night's Watch members are at Castle Black. Ramsey is not a stupid leak, a dumb fucker. We all like to think he is, but he isn't. So, I'm saying he knows Jon Snow, Sansa, Melisandre, Davos, and Brienne, they all left Castle Black. So now it's his opportunity. He's either going to send the Karstark's men, or the Umber's men, or his own men to Castle Black to go take care of the remaining Night's Watch members. Now he's going to be on some sort of bullshit, like you know how he sent his men with the fucking pink letter or whatever. Um, basically he'll do that again and he'll send some of his men and he'll say, look, I need to meet with the Lord Commander. And Dolores Ed being the Lord Commander is forced to go outside and meet with them, and in doing so, they're all taken prisoner. Some of them are killed, and Dolores Ed is intentionally kept alive so that he can be flayed and put up on that fucking cross. So, at that point in time, the two people on the cross most likely would be Dolores Ed and another Night's Watch member. We could also have Rickon being up on the cross, but I'm a strong believer that Rickon is going to be forced to run across the battlefield to Jon Snow and then be taken down right then. So, the two members up on the... Uh, <clears throat> it could be two Night's Watch members up on the cross, or it could be Dolores, Ed, and Davos. Now, the reason why I say that is not just because if you look at the blown-up image of Davos, it looks like he's got a half-hand. Not just that. But, Davos is seen going to the Mormonts with... John and Sansa, so what if they go do that and they're on their way to the Hornwoods or maybe they're on their way to Castle Black to go get some, freshen up on some plies or some shit and Davos is like, hey, look, I need to go take care of something. He goes to Shireen's funeral pyre, figures out what happened with Melisandre and Stannis and how Melisandre basically forced Stannis to sacrifice his daughter, or at least that's, how, that's the way Davos will see it. And Davos is subsequently caught by Bolton troops on the way back to meeting up with Sansa and John. Alright, so this next theory involves Bran and how he may become, like, the the fuck-up king of Game of Thrones. So basically, he's in the past, and he's trying to warn Brandon and Rickard Stark, his uncle and his grandfather, about what's going to go down once they enter King's Landing. And in doing so, he his voices are heard by Ares, the Mad King, who we already know is suffering from the famous Targaryen madness, and when he hears those voices, that's what makes him decide to put a chain around Brandon Stark's neck as he is trying to fight to save his father who's being roasted alive in a suit of armor. I said suit, made it sound like soup, which gave me that horrible mental image of someone boiling to the point of soup consistency inside of a suit of armor. Oh, that's fucking gross. But basically, Bran... If this theory is true, you are like the world's biggest fuck up, man. You killed Hodor in the past, present, and, and, and now you killed, you're, you're the one who actually killed, technically, your grandfather and your uncle before fucking A, Bran. Alright, so these next two theories are theories that I've comprised myself. Um, basically, the first one is going to be, well, technically, it's the third theory of this video, but basically, it's that Sansa's pregnant. Now, I first said this way back in March when we got those images of Sansa and Theon, and it looks like Theon was helping Sansa out of a river. Turns out Sansa was helping him out of the river, but we could see a little baby bump on Sansa's stomach. So, now having, after this past episode, when she's meeting with Baelish, she says, and I quote, I can still feel what Ramsay did inside of me. Now, to me, that sounded like there's a baby in there, and I know there's a gestation period and all this good shit, but basically, they've made it seem that there's been a significant amount of time passed because Santa was able to knit not only a beautiful gown for herself, but a fucking coat for her brother, which would take 
pretty good amount of time. So, with that being said, I think that her saying that she can still feel what Ramsey did inside of her, maybe it's morning sickness, maybe she can't actually feel a baby. I know that is impossible unless it's like an alien creature growing inside of her, which it just might be because Ramsey is not from this earth, or not from Planetos. Um, actually, you know what? He does fit in uh, with the rest of the people that are alive on Planetos. But anyway, basically I think that Sansa may be pregnant and that she has a baby growing inside of her that she will have to drink some moon tea in pretty fucking fast. And she just dissed Baelish, and he's the only one that might actually have the moon tea rest. You know, there's probably a few other people that have a moon tea rest. Sansa, you need to up your midwife game and get some more advisors near you, because I don't think Brienne knows anything about moon tea. On a side note, I do have um, a point to say about that. What she could have meant, this was brought to me by the attention of my beautiful subscribers, but basically... Um, what she could have meant when she said she could still feel what Ramsey did inside of her was that since she's a, a rape victim and like a trauma victim, someone who suffered a traumatic experience, she could actually just be talking about like the emotional scarring that she can feel inside of her. Like she just doesn't feel whole and like kind of like something's missing because she was abused so badly. So that could also be what she's talking about and she could also just not be pregnant, you know? Alright, and now we've arrived at the last theory, which I literally came up with this fucking morning. Like, I was sitting outside smoking a cigarette and it came to me, but this cigarette is the... This cigarette. This theory is the granddaddy of all motherfucking theories, and I hope, and I really do hope that you guys let me know what you think about all this shit down in the comment section, but mainly this one, because this one is like my fucking baby. So without any further ado, I need to go ahead and hit this. Alright, then we finna start talking about this shit. Alright, so basically, last season, Game of Thrones Season 5, we had Cersei searching for her father's killer. Her father's killer is Tyrion. She asked for several heads of dwarves. And basically, any dwarves in the vicinity of King's Landing were killed, and a lot of those dwarves' heads were brought into... Kyburn's lab, where Cersei would look at them and say, look, that's not fucking Tyrion, get that shit out of my face, and at one point, they even made a show, to show us a scene of that, where she's saying, get get rid of the head, and then Kyburn's like, you know what, I could keep it, it may turn out to be useful in my research, so, Robert Strong has the helmet on, and of course, his head looks really bulky, but what if it's a fake Tyrion head, now you're like, what the fuck does this matter, who gives a shit, well, if it is a fake Tyrion's head, technically, in Game of Thrones reality, that fake Tyrion head could make Sir Robert Strong Valonqar, meaning he is the younger brother. Meaning that when Tommen is killed in the chaos, because Tommen has proven that he has a weak spot for the High Sparrow and for religion and for life, basically, he doesn't. He's not like on some Morgan from Walking Dead type shit where all oh, life is precious, but he is on some shit where innocence shouldn't be slaughtered. So Tommen will be killed. Which is, I made this prediction back before the season even started, amidst chaos that surrounds Cersei's trial. Maybe the mountain starts killing every single High Sparrow, maybe even starts killing handmaid, hate, handmaidens, and shit like that. Just ran, random servants around the castle, and Tommen steps in and, 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 and tries to prevent it. And then, of course, he's slaughtered. So then Cersei is forced to jump in and try to save her child, and she is killed by the Valonqar, aka the mountain. A.K.A. Fake Tyrion's head on it, which is symbolism for him being killed by, but for Cersei being killed by the younger brother. Ah, oh, that's awesome. And you know what? Just for icing on top of the cake, for everybody, uh, like Tony Teflon, shout out to, to my nigga Tony Teflon, because he called this shit. He said that it was Jamie stabbing the mountain in the back. Now, what better way for Jamie to want to attack the mountain than if the mountain just literally killed his entire family. And on that note, real quick, um, to all you skeptics out there that are probably re-watching this clip that I'm playing for y'all right now where you see the Mad King getting stabbed in the back, or for those that think it's the Mad King, that could actually be the mountain's helmet falling off of his head after Jamie stabbed him, revealing that it's the head of a fake Tyrion. Holy shit, Mark. Holy shit, Sir Hunt's Reviews. Thank you. So much. Look, I'm cocky as shit this video, but this theory definitely is 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 awesome, is it not? All right, so that's going to wrap this video up. Um I hope you all enjoyed this, and if you did, if you can, please slap a like and subscribe. Um not just slap a like, slap a motherfucking like. I explained why yesterday. Basically, it just helps my channel out a shit ton. 
um, with uh, promoting other videos. So with all that being said, like 10 times this video, uh, let me know what you all think down in the comment section. The Jon Snow giveaway, yeah that's right, I'm giving away Kit Harrington. Nah, the Jon Snow doll gift card giveaway is still going on. All you have to do is click like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, leave a comment down below. I will be picking the winner on June 30th. Uh, this has been Sir Hunt's Refuse. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. I haven't done one of these after credit scenes in a minute. This little cat right here was left alone when I was at the beach. And when we got back, he pissed all over the fucking house. All over the house, dude. Like, when I walked in, the smell of pneumonia was so fucking bad. I had to go buy this pet deodorant carpet cleaner shit. It was in a box about this tall. I emptied it across my entire apartment and vacuumed the shit out of the piss smell. We left this motherfucker like five pounds of food and six bowls of water. I then found out, doing a little bit of research, that cats can go like humans, you know, like, uh, well, no, a little bit longer, I guess, but cats can go for like two weeks without water. So this motherfucker used that water as to piss all over my house. If you guys want to adopt Sir Hunt's Review's cat kitty, let me know down in the comment section, but on a further fucking side note, um, I will be going live on Sunday at 10, 15 p.m. East Coast Standard Time. That is, uh, after episode 6 airs, Blood of My Blood. Stay tuned for that. It's gonna be a rocking fucking panel. We got a whole bunch of new people. Um, uh, yeah. Peace!